welcome to Fear Fighters, Max Drones, 3 3 key Gaming, and more. This is Workers and Resources, Soviet Republic. Let's play Realistic Mode. And we're going to start a new game. And we're going to set it to Realistic. We'll set the year to 1960. And we're going to start a new game. We're going to put the settings for the amounts of lakes and hills down to 20. Just makes it a little bit easier for your initial setup. Which, I mean, come on, it's already difficult enough. Don't build anything. And we're going to start a new game. And here's some basic instructions. Rotate and zoom your camera. Um, pan it down. And try to orient your camera towards the far north. And the reason for this is that when you start actually laying down roads, which are basically the foundations for everything in this game, you have to have roads for anything, um, you want your roads to be square. So in order for your roads to be square, you have to have your camera actually squared up. I usually just point the camera down as far as I can, and I um, make it as square as possible. You can do this with the northern border very effectively. I'm checking right now for um, electrical, and there's no electrical here. And Basically, I'm just going over um, the map for terrain and border features and somewhere that doesn't require me to build a bridge. Um, just for fun, I've done this before and have built a bridge, but it takes a lot of resources that you could spend elsewhere. So it's better just to re-roll your map. Um, I picked this particular map because it did give me three uranium um, deposits, which will be important because I've chosen that as my starting industry. Um, there you saw me just check a border. NATO has power up in this corner and no power there, but there is power there because it's a randomly generated map. We are uh, close enough, I think, that we can do a power interconnect later. Um, we're going to start building out roads. Mud roads are free. If you hit the shift button, you can move a lot faster as you scroll around. Um, and that's a fine first road. So the second road, what you always want to try to do is you're going to build a crossroads. Um, because of how it randomly generated and there's that lake, um, we are going to do all of these things. The border crossing with electricity and rail is there. Um, uh, we are going to double all of our roads up, which I'll get to in just a minute here. Um, in order to save time and effort, sometimes I will be manipulating the time scale um, in the video editor. Um, right now I'm just uh, finishing up my road build and I'll be doing... Um, Basically doubling up the doubling up the works. Um, when you're at a crossroads, you want to make sure that it's basically a micro circle. So once you've got the X built, um, you want to make a nice little traffic circle. I deleted the uh, segments of the road there um, so that 
when it snows, your snow plows don't go off plowing stuff that they just don't need to plow. Um, but having those roads there is useful for the future. Um, I'm starting out by laying out some gas stations. Gas stations and fuel are really tricky at the very beginning of the game in realistic mode. I'd say they're one of the more challenging things. Um, you're going to need to uh, probably um, lay out a gas station at each border and at your area at your crossroads. Um, then one road depot. You don't need a whole bunch of road depots. You just need one. And when you have just a single road depot like that, you can uh, you can buy your first oil tanker from that road depot. You don't need to set anything else up. You don't need um, any depot or distribution yard. Sorry, you don't need any distribution yards. And um, you basically can just buy the required vehicle and go from there. Um, I'll get into detail about distribution offices and um, I lay all of my distribution offices typically out uh, at the beginning of the game at the crossroads. Um, some people want to lay them by the borders the thing about um, anything that you're laying out right now is basically temporary. Um, you don't want to build anything with any type of permanence in mind. Um, so you can basically just quickly make the crossroads and slap down your distribution offices, a gas station, a vehicle depot, and... Um, some storage yards in the construction yards. Okay, that's a bit of a list, but um, I'm laying out the open storage right now. You need two of them. You don't need more of them. You just want to have good separation between what you're hauling in. It's the same type of item, but still um, you want to be able to tell the trucks to go to different yards for the different items that you're going to be hauling. Uh, open storage, open vehicle. So just keep that in mind when you're building any of these aggregate um, dump truck so when you have aggregate yard you're going to need dumpers um, we're going to do the free construction offices all of these are free buildings as well um, you'll find these kind of tucked away in the menu um, as free. It'll have it in brackets when you're in realistic mode. These don't cost anything and I use them. I, I, I actually make good use of that and um, I often will move vehicles around. I'll bulldoze a construction yard and I will uh, move it to where I need the construction yards. Um, often near early, in the early game near a border. As the game progresses, I uh, make it a top priority to replace these free ones with legit ones. And um, in today's video, I'm only going to go so far as just getting started on your very first construction, which is of course going to be a construction yard. But um, right now I'm just placing out the construction offices that you're going to need in order to make that happen. Um, there is kind of like a chain, and I'll talk about that just for a second. It's basically set up your, set up your storage yards, set up your distribution offices, um, and then set up your construction yards. In that order is best. Um, you'll see why in a moment. So, um, if you saw my other video, uh, it's basically an unedited, unproduced version of this video. I bought a little bit of microphone and mixing board stuff, um, very cheap, and I'm sounding worlds better. Um, 
Thank you to the commenter in the original video who pointed out that my production values are trash. Um, I don't think he said it that way. I didn't really take it that way. But um, I uh, did recognize that it was a legitimate observation and I have tried to go out and rectify that situation by um, improving my hardware marginally and actually spending a little bit of time on the production of the video. I've cut the time in half. Um, right now I am setting up a line. So when you, the first vehicle that you actually buy is going to be uh, an oil tanker and it will be the T138 oil cistern in 1960. Um, and you're going to want to point it at the borders and point it at the gas stations. And you do this by going to the line tool, which is over on the left, and you can see it's highlighted in color right now. And um, you make a line, and then you edit the line. Um, and so other things that you can do with the actual vehicle, you can lock what it's carrying, just to ensure that it never carries the wrong thing, like bitumen or oil or stuff that you can't use um, at the beginning of the game. So yeah, basically I'm just setting up all of, the, all of the stations on the line right now, what it's supposed to do when the oil tanker arrives at each of these stations, right? Um, and the reason I decide to do a line at the beginning is because it's very micromanagey and you need a tiny bit of micromanagement just to get things off the ground. Um, you need fuel. Um, it's absolutely essential. It's the very first thing you'll import and it will be a pain in the butt for the first half an hour of your gameplay as often you will uh, run out of fuel. I just built that little road so it had a place to turn around and go grab fuel quickly instead of rambling on towards um, its destination far, far away. Um, I basically told it to go back to the custom station, fill up. Um, I put the road there so it had a quick and easy turnaround and off it goes. So there is my fuel truck. It is carrying 12 tons of fuel and it's going to head to the Diaries gas station. And it will drop off that first load of fuel there and then it'll do something semi-interesting because you just bought the oil tanker. It doesn't come with a full tank of gas. I guess um, they're kind of cheap that way and uh, <laughs> don't really want to give you a free full tank of gas. At any rate, you're an oil tanker, so you go to the free gas station. You pull in, you unload all of that fuel into the gas station. Okay. And then, whoops, you're out of gas. So, you pull out. You're the only vehicle on the map. You're only anything on the map, really. You turn around, you pull in, and you fill up your tank from fairly empty to fairly full. And this is how you can use a line to basically tell the oil tanker, very micromanaged style, to um, fill up the gas stations that you need filled up. And once again, using the magic of video production, here we go, around the lake, Beautiful Sunday drive, and it is going to drop off that big old tank of fuel, and right in the middle. And basically what's going to happen is when I start to buy vehicles, they are going to consume the nearest gas at the nearest gas station. It rolls back. Um, and once again, no, the game does not run this fast. Uh, 
I wish it did sometimes. But basically, um, I'm going to explain all the different main bits. Um, when you start the game, the mud yard, the mud roads are free. They don't cost anything, so lay them out to your heart's content. Don't lay out too many because they take a lot of effort to keep plowed in the winter. Um, when you're setting up the storage yards, basically, um, you only want steel and prefab in one yard and prefab panels in one yard and you want bricks and boards in the other open storage yard and the aggregates you want a gravel pit um, and you're going to set that just to gravel um, you can do this by basically um, removing their capacity to store other things and this is important because when you point the distribution office at it which is what we're doing right here um, we're going to add a connection to the border and then you're going to add the connection with that one single distribution office you can have multiple drop off points um, and we are going to be buying open haul trucks for this so in order to move things into the open storage yards we're going to be buying some open haul trucks so I buy those, you can buy three in a distribution yard, and basically as soon as they arrive there the first time, um, they will start doing their job. Um, this is the aggregate distro. You're gonna wanna buy dumpers for this, set it up at the border, drop it off at the uh, gravel pit distribution, or sorry, at the, at the storage yard for the gravel pit, and that's pretty much it. So this is set up and buying vehicles. What vehicles do I need? What do they all do? And the different phases of construction. Um, so obviously there's a crap ton of different vehicles in this game. There are so many. They give you options for different sizes and speeds and so on and so forth. At the beginning for the aggregate distro, I always buy the big, huge um, BZ252 because your gravel roads only allow you to go 35 kilometers. I don't really upgrade my roads for a long, long time because money's tight. Um, you'll see what I mean as I make more videos. Um, so there's all the different types I'm pointing out. Um, there are four main types. There's one for hauling liquids. There's one for hauling, uh, I call it, uh, solids. There's one for hauling aggregates, which I wouldn't really necessarily call a solid in volume. Um, and uh, there is one for refrigeration, which you won't need for a long time, but you will need it. And the refrigeration is just for hauling meat. And to keep people happy, you will need to feed them meat. In order to keep me happy, you need to feed me meat. In order to keep my dog happy, you need to feed him meat. Um, I'm going to be buying stuff for the uh, for the uh, construction yards. Construction yards handle the movement of your workers. I end up going with the 80 passenger bus at the very beginning. Same reason as the. Um, as the uh, big huge dump truck because you're limited to 35 kilometers an hour when it's not raining or snowing. So um, at the beginning you want to be able to grab a whole bunch of passengers and one of the things that I do do is I, um, in this circumstance, the borders are so close between the two different towns and uh, the workers at each town regenerate at not like an extremely fast rate so you want to be having um, two construction offices in a situation like this one going to each of the border crossings um, you need some heavy equipment heavy equipment can replace uh, man hours I usually buy two excavators and two uh, and two bulldozers 
and um, I usually name my my all my yards as I go. It just helps keep things kind of um, organized. You don't have to. It's all temporary at the beginning, personal preference. But yeah, um, you'll kind of figure out what works best for you. I usually name my things just in order to keep things uh, easy to identify, easy to... Um, uh, point things at other things, and that's the real reason I do it, is because I usually am trying to point things at other things, and sometimes there's not even anything in that thing, so I pre-name the storages, and then I'll pre-name the distros, and then I'll pre-name all the um, construction yards. And uh, the construction yards, I basically separate out the workers from the machines. You're going to have um, two construction yards, like I said, just handling workers, um, if you can have more than that, sometimes that's even better. Um, other players use that tiny, uh, there's a tiny cheap brown micro bus that you can have at the beginning of the game handle seven passengers. Um, it can be quite good, but it's hard to liquidate all of the passengers at the border with just micro buses, especially at the beginning of the game. Um, you're going to need to have something that handles just aggregates. I usually pick the smaller dump truck for the construction yard stuff um, because they'll draw less at a time from the yard than what's being delivered. And you can also just like shift these vehicles around. It's good to have a bit of an assortment for, um, for uh, things. Um, sometimes it can be an advantage. Um, I'm also pointing, this is very important, when you have a construction yard, you have to point uh, the, uh, you saw me briefly there at the border, I had pointed the, uh, the construction yard at where do you get resources. And using that little crane icon, I clicked that and then I just said, hey, go grab everything that I needed the border. Um, of course, um, it depends for each construction yard what you're doing with it. Um, if it's an open storage construction yard, then you have to point it at the proper open storages. If it's an aggregate construction yard, you have to point it at the, at the aggregate storage yard. Um, an interesting little tidbit is you can totally skip uh, storage yards and just point everything at the border if that was how you wanted to play. Um, I like having storages because it divides the labor between fetch it for me and here, go use it. And, um, and from a traffic management perspective, that's actually pretty useful. Um, that means that you don't have big lineups all at the same place for um, things coming in and things going out. Yeah, there's a construction yard I'll usually set up for asphalting, and I'll buy like um, rollers, asphalters, uh, sorry, they're called rollers, pavers, um, and you're also going to need road cranes. Uh, road cranes are used to set up um, your street lights, as well as um, for doing steel framing jobs and stuff like that. So there are four phases of construction. It always does the groundwork first, then it'll do um, the initial uh, the initial framing or construction work, and then it'll do the roof. Um, I think at times there can be a fourth construction phase depending on what you're building, but it's generally those three. Um, Oh, um, the one thing I haven't talked about is your closed your closed truck. Um, your closed truck is usually going to a warehouse, which there isn't a free one. You need to build a warehouse, but you don't really need it. Um, yeah, absolute madness after you buy, uh, buy it. My initial fuel truck, I guess, had run out of fuel, and I ended up fixing this. Um, I tried fixing the line, but the line didn't work. You really need to micromanage that fuel truck when you, uh, 
uh, get started, I ended up fixing it by buying a second fuel truck. And um, the second fuel truck, I assigned it to a distribution office. Um, and uh, eventually that did resolve. Um, but you have to basically micromanage your fuel at the very beginning because this is what happens. You end up with this giant lineup for everyone and their cat. And they all just indiscriminately line up at that gas station, which doesn't have enough fuel to support them. Um, you could put a second fuel station in. Um, I just like keeping things kind of as simple as possible. Um, you could buy two fuel trucks at the beginning and you'd have a bit more management options. This is pretty much, um, everything is going. Um, I'm gonna put down the initial building, which is going to be a large construction office. There's the biggest one that you can have there. Uh, um, and that may be where I end it. And I think that's a good enough introduction for what you need to know to get started. The basics overall are that you are building not a town, not you're not building anything, you're just buying a construction company and you're assembling all of the little pieces that you would need in order to run this construction company. Everything that you need to buy is available for purchase at the border and um, by the time you're done buying all of your vehicles, which most of your vehicles have to be purchased at the Russian border, at the Soviet border, so um, in 1960 especially, uh, there you go. Um, the vehicles, without me telling them to do anything, just by placing it, um, it creates a job queue. And that job queue is filled, the demand for those jobs is filled by um, supplying resources from the border and equipment from your construction yards and uh, workers from the border as well and basically any of any construction yards within range um, and you can set the range on the construction yards as well um, don't forget to set the range on your construction yards to three kilometers at the beginning of the game because anything that you're trying to build will probably be um, within not too far of that crossroads. If there's exceptions to that, then you can um, build that first construction yard and then move a whole bunch of vehicles to it and then plow over the free ones and re redrop them over where you need them. Um, so, yeah, like I was explaining, if you need workers, use a bus. Foreign workers are the answer. I kind of explained a little bit about how foreign workers regenerated the borders over time. So, um, they're not infinite. There's only 30 that can be picked up at the moment. So, when that big 80-passenger bus gets there, vroom, and it will basically not stop or stay. Um, you can use buses for lines uh, for your own workers, but you can't use them for foreign workers. So um, really the most useful thing that you can do with the line is to basically provide constant service, which is useful for things like, um, uh, by constant service, I mean that there's always a truck coming or going from um, that storage area the best use case for this at the beginning is fuel. Um, keep your trucks fueled up and so on and so forth. 